What's up, y'all? Jared Stanley here with our game preview. The Rangers and Astros' second game of a three-game series after last night's exciting walk-off win. 7-5, Adolis Garcia, the walk-off home run. First walk-off home run in Globe Life Field's young history. We'll talk about Adolis. We'll talk about the walk-off home run here in a second. First, though, I want to start with something that occurred to me earlier in the game. Uh, this is not a, a new thought, but Jose Trevino – and Jonah Heim have been so good at framing pitches this year. The Rangers have utilized a one knee approach uh, that is starting to uh, be more prevalent throughout major league baseball. And the whole idea is that it's supposed to help you frame pitches, particularly the low pitch. And yesterday in the sixth inning, Kyle Gibson fell behind Carlos Correa three Oh came back with a fastball or slider on three Oh was a strike and legitimately was in the zone. But then the three one pitch was a changeup That was not a strike. It was a little bit below the zone. But Jose Trevino framed it in the zone. It was called a strike. Next pitch, same thing. Change up. Not sure if it was a strike. It was maybe a little bit closer. Got the call. Jose Trevino did a great job. There's a statistic on baseball savant called runs from extra strikes. It's a catching framing statistic. And it converts strikes to runs saved uh, on a, you know, a, a statistical basis uh, based on the ability of a catcher to convert a pitch that technically wasn't a strike into a strike. And also I think it knocks you when you take a pitch that was a strike and it's not called a ball. Now, some of that's bad luck, right? Uh, I could receive the pitch perfectly on the outside corner, but the umpire just misses the call, you know, but you know, you, you think over time, all that stuff equals out. Well, Jose Trevino leads major league baseball with four runs saved from extra strikes. Jonah Heim with three. They're one and two in Major League Baseball. Haim is tied with Mike Zanino and Martin Maldonado, uh, as well as Tucker Barnhart in second. Jose Trevino all alone in first. The Rangers, if you do the math, four plus three, they have seven total combined runs saved from strikes, uh, which is the most in Major League Baseball. The Astros are second with four, the A's with three. So the Rangers have as many runs saved from strikes as the next two teams combined. So credit to Bobby Wilson, credit to Jose Trevino and Jonah Heim for putting in the work and, and you know doing everything that they can behind the plate to help out their pitchers. That's something the Rangers have excelled at. All right. Uh, Adolis Garcia, third extra inning home run already this season. The Rangers aren't even 50 games into the year. Because of the extra innings format, uh, who knows how many opportunities he's going to get. Uh, you know, in, in you know, the pre-zombie runner days, you might have two, three, four extra innings because it was just the same format. Now it seems like we're getting more 10 inning games and way fewer games beyond 10 innings. But he's taking advantage of his opportunities. Three extra innings home runs already. The major league record in a single season is five, set by Charlie Maxwell and by Nelson Cruz. Maxwell, the former Tiger, he did his over the course of 17 at-bats. He had five extra innings home runs. You might recall in 2010, Nelson Cruz was pretty much automatic in extra innings. And he used to joke is because he was hungry, he wanted to eat and needed the game to end. He had five extra innings home runs in eight games. Or excuse me, in, in, in eight at-bats. Uh, and, and as well, eight games. Unbelievable, right? Uh, sorry, nine at-bats, eight games. I knew there was something wrong when I said that. Five for nine in not just hits, but extra innings home runs. And it took place over the course of eight games. Unbelievable, if you guys remember Nelly's season. And then in 2011, in the postseason, he had all those extra innings home runs uh, against the Tigers and throughout the postseason. So Nelson Cruz, an extra innings guy, and it looks like Adolis Garcia is heading in that direction. Now, Adolis, uh, just an update, since he, since he made his season debut in 2013, uh, he continues to lead Major League Baseball in home runs now with 12. He leads in RBIs with 35, and he is tied for six. Uh, and hits with 41. So uh, Adolis Garcia is, is doing a lot of good good. Uh, now, I did do a little bit of a breakdown yesterday on uh, how pitchers are attacking Adolis and, and where he's maybe struggling. Well, Adolis is struggling at, at the elevated fastball. Uh, he's 0 for 16 when swinging at fastballs elevated above the zone, and he's chasing about 53% of the time, which is around 16% uh, more than league average. So he's struggling with that pitch. Oddly though, he's seen a lower percentage of fastballs elevated above the zone in May than he did in April. Now 
Uh, one area in which he is succeeding is the inside fastball. He's had a lot of success on the inside fastball. So pitchers aren't really able to beat him inside, which is interesting because he also does and has demonstrated a lot of opposite field power, like his home run against Garrett Cole uh, earlier this homestand and his home run yesterday. The walk-off was to the opposite field. So he's not a, you know, a guy who struggles to hit the inside pitch. He's just really good, uh, you know, covering the plate laterally. Now, uh, with two strikes, uh, Adolis Garcia is chasing pitches out of the zone about 64% of the time. League average is 46. So uh, with two strikes, he is way more susceptible to chase. That's an area he's got to improve upon. The good thing is that Adolis is hitting fastballs and breaking balls really, really well. Uh, he's had really uh, high levels of success against both fastballs and breaking balls. He's really struggling against off-speed pitches, change-ups, uh, split changes, fork balls, which really don't get thrown, and then screw balls, which maybe only Brent uh, Honeywell throws. But uh, he's hitting 048 against change-ups without a single extra base hit, and his Woba is 100. So incredibly poor against those pitches. And he's starting to see a little bit more. Now, the good thing is if you're going to struggle against – fastball, breaking ball, off-speed, one of those categories. Off-speed's probably the, the category because these days, almost everyone's got a breaking ball of some kind. Not almost everyone has a changeup. Uh, there are a lot of pitchers who don't utilize a changeup, especially relievers. Now, there are some who are fastball change, but there are more pitchers who, uh, whether it's that they have it or they feature a breaking ball than a changeup, and a changeup's a field pitch. And it can be a little inconsistent. It'd be great for him to obviously improve upon changeups, but that is one, you know, I, I think if you really struggle against breaking balls, you're going to have a really tough time. Uh, if you really struggle against fastballs, you're going to have a really tough time. You might be able to mask your struggles with changeups. All right. So that's a, a little bit of a, a, a surface level breakdown of, of some of Adolis Garcia's, uh, you know, pitch characteristics. Now I did get asked this yesterday. What's Adolis Garcia's future with the Rangers? And the answer is a big TBD, right? Uh, you know, is he a Danny Santana? Could be. Uh, I think his skill set's better than Danny Santana. Uh, and so I think that it projects better that he's a guy that is, is consistently productive. Probably not at this level. But I do think that Adolis Garcia, when I look at him, I think, hey, could be an everyday player. You know, really could. He's obviously that and more right now. What about... Uh, you know, what about uh, Nelson Cruz? Is he a Nelson Cruz, you know, late bloomer who's, you know, become a stud? You know, I'm not ready to go that far yet. You know, it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. He's got a lot of raw skills and abilities, but some of the numbers, the chasing that we talked about, that's got to improve. But I would say that he's he's closer to that than he is just, you know, a 15 seconds of fame guy who we never hear from again. But, you know, is this a guy who's going to make, multiple all-star teams. I don't know that yet. There's still so much to be determined. He's barely been a major leaguer this year for a month. You know, it's been a, a month and 10 days. Uh, but I did get asked this question. Would the Rangers consider trading him? And I know no one wants to hear that question, but I would be lying to you if I said that unequivocally, no, they would not consider trading. I don't think they're just going to give him away, but if a team is willing to overpay for Adolis Garcia with the belief that he's going to ride this hot wave throughout the rest of the season and maybe beyond, then the Rangers would have to absolutely have to entertain that because the reality is as much as we're caught up in a Dolis mania and, and uh, Bombi mania, a lot of guys across the league have these stretches and they take the league by storm and then they're never quite the same player. It doesn't mean they disappear, but they're never quite the same player. So the Rangers, I don't think are going to just say, we're going to take whatever we can get for them. But if there's a team that really values him highly, you know, maybe it's a risk reward situation where the Rangers have to evaluate. Do we really have conviction that this guy is going to be in our everyday lineup for the next three to five years? Or do we think that this is a guy who eventually will get exposed and thus, uh, you know, it makes sense to try and get some value while we can. It's just a possibility. I'm not saying it will happen, but when posed that question, will the Rangers, uh, would they consider moving him? I can't definitively say no, under no circumstances would they move them. There you go. That's our Rangers game preview. Hey, let's, uh, let's kick some, uh, some Astros tail again today. Uh, show them what's up here in the state of Texas. Talk to y'all later.